Welcome to In the Studio on Davis Media Access. I'm Tim Gaffney, and today we have Rachel Hartso, the Arts and Culture Manager for the City of Davis. Rachel has over 25 years of experience designing and administering creative opportunities and resources for artists of all ages. She was the Curator of Education at the Nevada Museum of Art, and she worked for the UC Davis Arboretum to design public engagement programs. She also served as the creative director of the Davis Arts Center's Discovery Art Program. She's also consulted on the design of educational and interpretive exhibits and programs at the UC Berkeley Art Museum, the San Francisco MoMA, the De Young Museum, the Children's Creativity Museum in San Francisco, and the Manetti Schrem Museum of Art at UC Davis. Rachel, welcome to the show today. Thanks, Tim. I'm glad to be here. Well, so can you give us a, an overview of the, the arts and culture program in the city of Davis, and what you do? Sure, love to. Um, I'm gonna actually read you our mission statement just so I don't flub it up. And um, the, we are officially the city of Davis Arts and Cultural Affairs and our program supports community-based projects, cultural opportunities and education initiatives, initiatives that foster excellence, diversity, and vitality in the arts. And while that's our, our you know, official statement, what we do is operate a few different programs. One is our Arts in Public Places program, which is our public art collection that we, um, that we generate and maintain. And um, most recently, we have created this great public art map that is meant to be a pocket map that you can take out and take around town and it has close, I think over 170 pieces of public art that are either um, owned by the city, part of our city inventory or by private entities around the community. We encourage folks to go around and check those out. There are always new things coming online and um, they are distributed all around the city. Um, I'm, getting, I'm getting prompted to share one with you. You might've been lucky enough to see this. This is a piece called Resurrection that was created by a local group called Circle of Bees. What you're looking at here is Central Park and these are actually temporary swarm capture hives. Um, one of the things that we do through our program is really try to promote good in our community. One of those is um, looking at how we, how we promote environmentalism and environmental stewardship. This was a project that um, was set up over a weekend. And the idea of these, they are these kind of um, little cavernous things that are hung in the trees and they are meant to cap to to provide places for swarms to locate and the goal with this is that the swarms fly into these and then this group circle of bees can take these and reposition them into healthy hives typically um, when the hives come and swarm at this this time of year i think like early spring maybe um a lot of the time they'll go into buildings and we don't want that to happen because then they usually need to be exterminated. We love our bees, we want our bees. And this is one of the great ways that we can use art as a tool in our community to promote environmental sustainability among other things. Um, so this is a, a picture of our Davis Centennial Seal. This is one of our most recent and exciting pieces of public art. It was designed by artist Susan Shelton and it is a large, uh, about seven foot diameter bronze seal that has been carved out of ceramic cast and is in the ground in front of a newly designed plaza in front of the Hunt Boyer Mansion. One of the exciting initiatives that we're working on with this particular piece right now is a partnership with the UC Davis Mellon Public Scholars Program. And we had a wonderful fellow last summer and we are in the process of selecting another fellow who will join us this coming summer to develop interpretation and educational materials around the seal. You can't really see all the details in this picture, but there's loads in it. Um, and those will be turned into curriculum for K through 12 students and interpretation for the community. So um, one of the, uh, I'm gonna go back to our first question about what the, what the program does. And in addition to our public art program, we also fund a number of community arts grants and opportunities. What you're looking at now is a temporarily temporary pavement painting that is in front of the International House Davis on their patio. This was done by an artist who goes by Shai Boy Toto. 
and it was done just after COVID started, as you can tell, sadly, from the masks in the picture, um, and just prior to um, the census. And this particular picture has, um, it, it's promoting census and promoting diversity and equity in those who are included in the census and also just sharing imagery of the diversity in our communities. This is just one close up of, of this. But again, another way that we use arts through our program and we really try to support artists in the community to use their arts to promote creative expression to communicate messages. Um, one of the important things that we were able to do during COVID that we did, we don't have an image of that here, but we worked with local artists, many of whom were out of work temporarily because of COVID. And we were able to commission some local artists to use their work to incorporate into some of our Healthy Davis Together signage and, and publicity around town to promote vaccinations, promote mask wearing, um, and promote just generally supporting the community. So um, this image is something I just took a couple days ago down on E Street Plaza. And it is, um, it's not even, I have no idea who these people are. <laughs> they were a bunch of young folks down there um, playing their horns on a, I don't know, Thursday, Friday afternoon. And it was just such a joyful thing to see live performance coming back and to see people gathering and to see people sharing music. Um, one of the things that's really wonderful about this program is we get to provide the resources and provide the support that helps artists, you know, of all levels, both the from the students who are getting together to play their horns to the higher level professional artists to use their art to promote again, promote good things in our community. So one of those right now is just community joy, um, which you get from live music. So uh, a really important initiative that we've been working on for the past, um, well, it'll be two years this coming June is something called the Solidarity Space. This is not a city project. It is a city supported project. It's run through an initiative with a group that goes by Solidarity Space and the International House Davis. This is a, a, a large um, project the city has been supporting with full city council support to um, to make permanent a create a space that was created after the murder of George Floyd. And a group of people came together in our community to identify the space as a space where people could gather, could be courageous together, could share support for one another. And the idea here is that the city will be supporting and working with these groups to create a permanent piece of public art in our Central Park celebrating Black lives in our community. And currently there is a, a project going on that will end up with a, with a temporary piece of art there and the 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 it's called it's a, the theme of it is is um, celebrating black and brown joy, or what does black and brown joy look like? Um, and we're excited about that. So we'll see that sometime in the park in Central Park soon. Um, one of the great things that we get to do is work with the Downtown Davis Business Association, downtown vendors, um, local artists and artisans who share their work downtown. And also to use joy, use artwork to celebrate um, things in our community. So this particular bench you're looking at was just created very recently. It's in the G Street Plaza. It was done by an artist named Wes Horn. And the purpose of it is to celebrate the, um, it, it was actually not a city funded project. It was a donated project by community sponsorship. So a group of folks in the community got together and brought this project forward to the city. And it is commemorating the many um, positive things that Bob Bowen bestowed upon our community during his time working with the city. So it's full of a lot of icons of important things that you see around town that, um, that are kind of the signature things of Davis. So picnic day, the high wheeler, things like that. Um, so that was just a little smattering of some of the recent and current projects, just so you can get a taste for what they look like and feel like. And um, right. I'm happy to give you. Um, well, thank I'm you for delighted to share more about them. <laughs> yeah. No, thank you so much. And you know, I know that you have a particular interest in uh, using art to promote social action, sustainability, and, and 
environmental stewardship and and it was clear through a number of those examples you showed that that the city shares those those goals and that there's a number of opportunities and it really it highlights the 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 richness uh, of the arts program here uh, in Davis. You mentioned COVID uh, in connection with, uh, in particular, the the piece outside of the International House. Can you say more about what impact you think COVID has had on the arts landscape in Davis and, and maybe how we're doing coming out of COVID? Yeah, um, it's it's been pretty devastating, to be honest. Um, the, you know, a lot of things happened during COVID, obviously, obviously all public performances shut down, you know, for a very large chunk of time. So, so anybody that made their, their living or even who didn't make their living, but who, who had that as their kind of passion in their life, um, those, those folks all really just shut down what they were doing. Um, you know, and that's not just the performers, it's the technicians, it's the engineers, it's the lighting consultants, it's the people who design sets, like there's so many layers of people who are involved with um, with performing arts on the one hand. So so those closed down, visual artists who, um, you know, whose work was showing in galleries, who were creating things in group settings, they're just at every level in the arts, COVID really put a very hard stop initially into what they were doing. And um, th while there was an immediate surge of kind of government assistance and unemployment and things like that for a lot of people, a lot of artists don't fall into those categories. They don't necessarily have a permanent salary job someplace that makes them eligible for, eligible for unemployment. They didn't necessarily fall into the categories for some of the government CARES funding. And so, um, so financially, COVID had took a really, really big hit. Um, it, artists took a really big hit from COVID, um, you know, and not just individual artists, but also the organizations that didn't necessarily qualify as small businesses. Um, so, so one, so that has been really difficult um, and continues to really, really be difficult for those communities to get back up on their feet. I will say though, the, the kind of really positive, amazing silver lining of all that was that a lot of people came together. There was a lot more networking um, that was able to take place, tremendous support within communities for each other. Um, and in really the advent of really people being able to do so much on Zoom, um, brought a lot of people together into communities that they would not have had in the past. Um, I mean, I myself have participated in tons of different workshops with people around the country. The ability to see a performance from somebody who's, you know, performing in their living room, in Milwaukee or performing in a park in New York, those types of things we didn't have before, or if we did, they weren't widespread and now they're the norm. And that's really exciting because it'll bring us, you know, it's kind of opened up a new genre of the arts, quite frankly. Um, right. But but what is happening now, I think, is that you, it, there's this sort of amazing backlash and a lot of people have talked about artists as second responders during this time. So when there's a, a social trauma or a natural disaster, um, you know, we have our, our first responders who come in and do the immediate emergency related things that need to happen. But a lot of people are talking now about the arts community and artists as second responders coming in and helping communities heal after these traumas. Um, so, so you see that in a lot of things happening now, artists are the ones who are kind of articulating visually and through performance and through music, um, what we've all experienced, but can't necessarily articulate um, to each other and really helping us try to process um, the grief that a lot of people are feeling right now, you know, over like actual losses of people, but also experiences that we've lost in the last few years that we're still, you know, right. we're, still, we're still experiencing. Um, right, that, that's so, really a beautiful I, way to frame it. Thanks. Yeah, thanks. It's it, it's been a big part of what I have been involved in, and what a lot of people in our community have been involved in for the past two years is just trying to figure out how to keep everybody um, afloat during this difficult time. Um, and and what's That's great so is we'll see now. I think this spring that a lot of those efforts are going to just you know burst forth in festivals and music and live performance right. and things that. Um, yeah, I wanted to ask you on that: is are there 
Are there, you know, one or two things in, in our last few moments here that you may want to point to just to highlight some particularly exciting things coming down this spring or this summer? Uh, yes. Feeling the relief, <laughs> expressing that I'm joy so of arts. Yeah, um, a lot of a lot of our annual festivals that we that typically happen in the summer and spring have been canceled, postponed the last few years, and so you're going to see a great. Um, this June we have the Davis Music Fest, which is was going to be celebrating their 10 year anniversary when COVID hit. So this will be their belated 10 year anniversary. Um, that's going to be all around downtown in the middle of June. Um, it's a wonderful good time and will be especially celebratory this year. The Cherry Blossom Festival is returning. Uh, that's going to be in April. There is Juneteenth, which is going to be at the beginning of June. And um, we, we have a great Davis Live Music Initiative that is um, working on helping to cultivate emerging artists in our community. So all of those things, gallery openings that um, we can finally attend, the reemergence of Second Friday Art Abouts, which have just started in the last few months, um, the, the reimagining of Third Space, which, um, there's just so much happening and so many artists with so much energy right now. Um, there are lots of individual artists who are who are just bringing their artwork out and lots of little vendors selling things. So um, expect hopefully that the coming months and future will be full of lots more art than we've had in the last two years. And um, and I hope to see you and and viewers um, at some of these events. I'm really looking forward to them myself. Oh, well, that's great. Rachel, thank you so much for sharing that, that joy and that optimism. Uh, and, you know, thank you for the work you do and that the city of Davis does to make this uh, a vibrant arts community. Um, just, just wonderful. Thank you so much. So, and thank you all for listening. You've been watching in the studio here on Davis Media Access. I'm Tim Gaffney, and we'll see you next time.